Hello and welcome to the Expat Reality Podcast. I'm your host, Annie. And I'm your host, Steve. And in this podcast, we're going to explore the reality of living life as an expat in Australia and what it really means to feel like you belong. Join us as we uncover the challenges and opportunities that expat life presents on the search for settled. With our stories, tips and interviews, see us as your two friends to help you navigate expat life abroad. Just to let you know, this video podcast series is brought to you by the team at Auric Migration and Mobility. Now, Auric have helped us personally with my visa process to Australia, and we only know too well how difficult the entire process can be if you're doing it by yourself. They have also helped hundreds of our followers, and they're offering our listeners an initial assessment for free. Email them your visa situation, questions or concerns, and they will get back to it no extra cost. Simply mention the Expat Reality Podcast when you email them at migration at auric.com. Auric is spelled A-U-R-E-C. So that's migration at auric.com. Welcome back to the Expat Reality Podcast. I'm your host, Annie. And I'm Steve. And today's episode, we are going to talk about our gut issues that we have been experiencing for years and years. I think actually mine started when I came to Australia and it's been a very much an ongoing issue that I do feel is pretty much Australian based, uh, which we're going to talk about in this episode with you today. So I'm kind of just discussing some of the issues I've sort of been facing and some of the things that have helped me. So yeah. Um, what we're going to talk about today in this episode is we're going to really uh, strip it right back where we're going to talk about the gut issues that we've both been facing for a very long time. We're also going to talk about what happened after I did the elemental diet. Now, if you're unsure about what that is, it's basically like a liquid powdered form diet that you have to take, which I documented it on YouTube and it became uh, probably our most popular YouTube video that we've made to date and I get asked on a daily basis where I'm at now with it so it's kind of like a follow-on from that but we'll also take you back to the beginning as well so you can understand what's been happening now I'm pretty much at the stage where I probably feel the best I felt for a really long time but that is not to say that I have cured myself I still suffer from pretty bad gut issues um, right now but I have learned a lot especially in the last year Um, in terms of how I can kind of manage it. So I think in this episode, we're just going to sort of talk about what has worked for us and also reassure any of you out there who are also suffering from gut issues that you are not alone and we know only too well how of a much of a lonely experience it really can be and how um, debilitating it is as well yeah and i mean not only for people you know who are expats but also for people who live in australia it's not like it's just for expats it's for everybody and i think you know anyone who's experienced that sort of trouble would pretty much identify with the sort of troubles we've uh, experienced and it's not only people in australia it's people worldwide like people are suffering from this everywhere and it is insane so Anyways, I think we should get right into it. Um, I think let's start with you, Steve. Tell us all about how your gut issues came about. Yeah, well, actually, it's a bit of a funny story, Marlon, actually. Um, so basically I, I, I first, when I first went to India, I, um, I was staying in this hostel and I ran into the, the doorman or the night manager or the day manager as it, as it was at at that moment. He, um, he said, Oh, look, do you want to be in a Bollywood film? And I was like, (laughs) Yeah, like where do I sign up? Is this a trick question? Like, <laughs> you know, like of course. How do I do this? Oh my He's god, like, I forgot this is how it all starts. Yeah, so I was like, this sounds amazing. Yeah, sign me up. Anyway, so next thing I know, I'm, you know, I'm like turning up to you know, four o'clock that afternoon, and a bunch of other guys had he'd roped in as well. He obviously get a nice little commission on the side for him. He was a happy chap. Anyway, so I got bundled into these expensive looking four wheel drives, and I hopped in, and there was this guy powdering his nose and I was like what what is going on here this is bizarre I literally had just landed in Mumbai and it was my first exposure to India I didn't know anything you know what didn't know a thing about it what I was doing anyway so we drove and we drove and we drove and we drove to the very outskirts of the city and there was all these kind of like event uh sort of 
like sort of areas that you'd sort of stop off and have a little celebration, like a wedding zone. Anyway, so we there was just acres of these sort of properties around the place, and we pulled into one of them, and there was it was jam packed, it's full of like cameras and booms and everything, and I was like, oh, this is down it's really exciting, sounds awesome, let's get amongst it. In all the rush, I'd forgotten to bring some water with me. I was like, you know what? I I just totally forgot about. I was just overcome with all this excitement about being in a Bollywood film. Didn't even think about bringing any water. Anyway, so we waited around and we waited around and I'm like, when's, you know, are we going to like do some like filming and stuff? Like, is that going to happen anytime soon? And I was just, oh no, sir, it will be soon. And I was like, okay, that's all I heard for like three hours. It'll be soon. So anyway, um, I was like, I'm really, really thirsty. I've got time to go. And I asked one of the, one of the guys that's hanging around, I was like, oh, is there a shop nearby? Is someone get some water? And he's like, oh, no, there's nothing for miles. Nothing here. No, uh, nothing. Uh, we've got tap water, though. You can drink. And I'm like, uh, you know. <laughs> anyway, so this went on for quite a few hours. I was like, I tried to last. You know, I tried to, you know, do my best to try and quench that thirst in my mind. But I was like, you know what? <sighs> Let's just drink it. I've heard these stories about you know, kind of people having bad experiences, you know, and I was like, well, I'll give it a shot. I'm super thirsty and this is, you know, what's the worst that could happen to me? Anyway, so uh, well, there was this other guy in the corner. He had this bottle of milky coloured kind of water and I kind of looked at him and went, oh, you know, is that kind of tap water? And he's like, yes, it is. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll go on. I'll have some. And he's like, okay, okay, sure. And I poured it in and I was like, oh, relief. I felt rid of relief for a you know, short while. Anyway, uh, time went on. I kind of like a bit of gurgling going on in the stomach. And anyway, uh, that was to the side because I was busy, like, you know, getting into the thicker things with, you know, having to dance around a car and pretend I was super excited these, you know, this couple were getting married and stuff. So that was, uh, there's all this filming going on eventually after some time, you know. And I was, you know, seriously involved in all of that. And I wasn't too concerned about anything stomach wise so I was like had a great time got some shots and anyway hopped back in the car again to go back home and started to feel some cramps and I was like oh this is not such a good thing anyway so I got to back you know late in the evening would have been about sort of 12 one o'clock in the morning and I got back to the hostel and I was like this is not good I'm not feeling well uh yeah I, I, I don't think this is a good thing um, and then literally for the next three days, I was just cramped up and bubbling, gurgling in my stomach was just horrendous. Um, I, I was completely ill prepared for, uh, you know, didn't have any sort of major stomach medication or anything like that. So I just kind of endured this really, really bad kind of stomach pain and gurgling, that sort of thing. And yeah, I didn't quite know what to do. And I went to the doctor and of course the doctor's just like, oh, here's some, you know, antibiotics, go for your life sort of thing. And that sort of helped a little bit. But from that stage forward, it was pretty much a case of, you know, your stomach's never going to be the same again. And I was kind of reading about it later and I've read that, you know, the tap water is like so many parts per million of bacteria and who knows what I've kind of ingested now. So those little microbes have made them <laughs> made themselves a home, you know. So it was kind of, um, yeah. And that uh, from that stage forward, I don't think my, my stomach was ever the same again. So and now you've spent the last how many years trying to oh, trying so to get time. it back to normal again, which it probably and won't ever go back to it. There's been times where it's kind of felt okay, like you know, I, I've been fine for a few months, or you know, periods of time where I feel good. That's fine, but it's, it seems some foods or some kind of different activities trigger it. I'm not, you know, hundred percent nailed on it, but I'm, I'm getting much better at it than what I used to be. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing. It's, it is a bit of a hit and miss type situation, but that's generally my, my story of how it started. It was, yeah, a bit of a, bit of an odd, odd and, story. Uh, um, do you remember what year that was when that started? Oh, geez, that would have been 2006. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's been that long. It has. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, Mine really started, um, I'd say it's probably about 2014. So after we started the site Londoner in Sydney, I would get invited to various events around the city, whether they were like openings or fashion events or whatever. 
which at the time were quite exciting because I felt like, oh, people care. Well, they didn't really. But um, anyway, so I got invited to this launch of a new chef. I think it was at um, a restaurant in the middle of the city. So Steve and I went along thinking, hey, great, we're going to get free food, free booze for the night. Yeah, it was How? like a wine tasting. I know. And yeah. Sorts. Yeah, it, was, it sounded great. And the irony of that night is that I sat opposite the oyster farmer who was serving up the oysters for that night and claimed that they were the best in New South Wales. And I hadn't even eaten oysters all my life until probably about six months before when we were in South Africa and we had them and they were actually really good. Steve a great experience. Yeah, they were, they were amazing. Seriously tasty oysters. But, Neisner was all we first oh, had. Yeah, that was it. Was, it. Was great, um, yeah. Anyways, get back home that night. I was violently ill. I had food poisoning. The PR still expected me to write an article about that opening, which obviously I was never going to do, which is bizarre. But uh, I had food poisoning and that is really what kicked off the gut issues for me, which pains me so much because I feel like, what if I hadn't gone that night? Do they do those chefs truly understand the trauma uh, that they put me through all these yeah. years but then I strip it back and I go well if I hadn't started the site then would I have been invited to it I mean there's so many layers you could peel back from that but at the end of the day that's what happened and I was the only person that night who did get food poisoning so you know luck of the draw it could have been anybody at the table you know mm -hmm. just that person could have been served a different oyster and you yeah. could have been served a good one and who knows yeah. one of those things but i remember that year when we were in australia between 2011 and 2012 i did have gut issues but i but like most people you just think oh am i putting on weight is that what it is and you didn't i didn't really think too much into it is it just getting older like you know you yeah. think is it just part of the aging process absolutely and so then once that happened and I got these gut issues, then it just started to get worse and worse to the point where I had like a really stressful job. So I was working in radio again in um, Sydney, but the hours were like really long and to the point, you know, I'd be the only one in the office every night till like nine, 10 o'clock at night. And I would like raid people's desks who'd always have chocolates and stuff on their desk and I would just smash them and eat them all. And <laughs> at that time, I was actually super, super healthy. No chocolate bar, she'll remain. But that, but working late every night, I would smash those chocolates and I was making those gut issues worse and worse. And so I got to the point where I was really scared. I thought, I honestly thought I had bowel cancer, which is what my mother had and died of. And so I thought, oh my God, I've got the same mm. I went to all these doctors. They kept saying everything was fine. And I was like, I'm not fine. And you know what I had to do? I kept doing like juice cleanses every couple months. So I do like 10 day juice cleanses where you're not eating anything because I didn't know what to eat anymore because I was in so much pain that I was like, I'm just going to have to drink liquid juice, which now I know that that was probably one of the worst things I could have done was putting all that sugar into my body and feeding the gut issues as mm. they were. And so after doing all of that, and I remember go, once going to a doctor and I was like, I cannot eat right now because I'm in so much pain and the bloat is so bad and painful. Steve couldn't even hug me or anything. And I was like, I can't even eat. I'm drinking liquid. And she was like, well, you're fine. And I'm like, I'm not. And yet again, I was walking out of there crying and basically shouting at the doctor. And I got to a point where I didn't know what to do. And so a doctor had recommended doing a colonoscopy, which I did. They said it, it all came back fine. And that experience was awful. I like went to this random, like almost like a makeshift hospital room in the <laughs> middle of like Chinatown. It was really weird. And I remember waking up and the doctor had left me and he basically just walked out and just told Steve, oh, she's fine. But I actually wasn't fine. I had H. pylori, uh, which I may have picked up during our travels in Africa. And they, he literally just sent me a script and said, oh, she's got H. pylori. Um, here's some medication to take. You'll be fine. And then that was it. And I wasn't, obviously. Yeah, well, I had a similar thing. I went and had sort of a gastroscopy and endoscopy as well. So I had cameras in both. And like you, the yeah, same. Yeah, it's the like, same, yeah. You know, I was kind of concerned that it was something more serious and that, you know, there was – we had to investigate further and the doctors were the same way. So, yeah, it, it's kind of this thing where you think, right, well, now that there's nothing kind of wrong in that way, what's – 
what do I do now? Like, what's yeah. the next step? Yeah, and that's the thing. And, I, and so many of our followers have gone down the same route where they're like, well, I'm going to go and get these, uh, going to go and do a colonoscopy because I don't, they can't figure out what's wrong because all the blood tests and everything are all coming back normal. And they're saying I'm fine, whereas I'm not. And I had like all these scans and everything. And they're like, you're fine. And you know that you're not fine. And so I got to a point where once they kept saying that to me, I was like, okay, I need to do something about this myself. So I started to research it. And then I went down the diet route. So I started to change my diet drastically. And I was, I went on a raw diet. I went on the I quit sugar diet. All the diets you can poke a stick at. Everything. And you know what happened? Every single time I tried a new diet, within the first three weeks, I was like, oh, I feel amazing. It's working. And then bam, it'd get worse and worse. I went to a gut naturopath in Sydney that I just literally Googled online. Went to see him. He got me to do a SIBO test, which is a breath test that you do. SIBO, if you don't know it, basically means small intestine um, bacteria overgrowth, which apparently like a huge percentage of people have it, but they don't realize they have it. So he said to me, you've got two options. One, you either, you do a low FODMAP diet and you take some antibiotics or two, you do the elemental diet, which would, would be two weeks of drinking this powder um, without food to starve off the bacteria. It's actually made for like astronauts or something. Yeah, isn't it? it yeah, is. It's Apparently like... it's made for the astronauts going up to space. So it's a sort of, it, it gives you all of the nutrients apparently need um like for your food without having to eat it. So, man, it's like, like you don't have to pack. You know? don't have to put your packed lunch in there when you're like, going up into space. You can just drink this liquid and yeah. away you go. And they could probably recycle the liquid as well, I guess. So right? just to let you know at the time, this is going back to um, around about September 2017. So we were getting ready to go on our around-the-world travels for a year and I was absolutely bricking it because I thought I'm not going to be able to do very much because – I would struggle to even walk very far because I was in so much pain all the time. I literally like stabbing gut pain and I was completely scared of food. I had no idea what to eat anymore because everything I ate just flared up. I remember even like brushing my teeth in the morning and it would flare up. Like it was really bad. Wow, I your teeth. Yeah, it was <laughs> awful. And so um, I was like, right, I'm going to do the elemental diet. It's fine. I'm so used to doing these juice cleansers i can go 10 days without eating food and just doing juice cleansers i'll do this diet that'll be fine and actually when i started i was like god this is quite easy like i i didn't find it difficult at all and then I, that's when i documented it um and made a youtube video and i documented every day to show people what that process was like in case anyone else was going to do it and that has become one of our most popular youtube videos it's pretty intense and i, I have to say like i was pretty impressed um, and also I, I kind of sympathize with anyone who is the partner of someone <laughs> going through that process because it, it, not only is it taxing on the on the person who's going through the process, it's partner may and find it stressful as well. Well, that's the thing with all gut issues. It's not only you going for it, it's everyone in your household is going for it yeah. because it is so traumatic. It, it literally strips you of your identity and you're never going to understand it unless you've been through it yourself. So when I did the elemental diet, he said to me, do it for two weeks. And then I started to read up about it when I was doing it and people were saying, oh, you've got to do it for six weeks for it to work. And I was like, oh my God, and I had to order it from America. And so um, I basically made it last for 26 days. So I spent 26 days without eating any food whatsoever, <laughs> which in itself is That's a feat. Oh my god, it is so such a huge thing to get your head around not eating anything for that long. And I I really missed the sort of social aspect of food, but I got really used to it. And what I really loved was not having anxiety about what on earth I could eat anymore. So it's like all you have to choose from is your little drink. That's yeah, it. That There's was no it. kind of what will I eat today? It was tell you what, it saves you a lot simple. of time huge amounts of time from having to like prepare food or anything but um i remember day 12 i think it was in the video that i made it was really like um it was really upsetting actually to watch it back and sometimes i do watch it back just to remind myself sort of how far i've come but i felt like it wasn't working at all and i felt very trapped to my own body which i have felt a lot since it's not something that's just gone away and what i mean by that is in terms of you feel like you can't really be yourself anymore. Like you can't, 
you can't do those normal things like, oh, let's go out for dinner or let's go out for a couple of drinks. Like all of that sort of goes out the window because it brings so much misery to like your health. So that was um, that was a really interesting experience in the elemental diet. And I do get a lot of people since have asked me how I've been getting on since I did that, which is we just worked out as five years ago, which is mad. And like I'm still going for it now. And I've realized those gut issues, I'm probably going to go through them pretty much for the rest of my life, I'm going to have to almost maintain and manage that and to a certain degree. If you go to your GP, you can get like, you know, the usual type of treatment for any sort of stomach infection if you're going on a extended trip. So, um, you know, that you can get those before you, you leave to go away so that if in the event you do get sick, you've got something. So you're totally prepared. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, in some places that you might go, it's going to be tricky to – to get to a doctor. So while we were there and I was telling the travel doctor that I um, had all these bad gut pains and then she said, she was like, oh, I've heard that if you take anti-malarials that that, that could actually um, help with gut pain. So I was like, I'm sold. I'm going to take them. <laughs> Bring on the anti-malarials. <laughs> and, it, and it actually helped. I thought it did and I took them for about a year, which is a really bad thing to do. So I took these anti-malarials for about a year, I think, and I was quite dependent on them because I thought, yes, this is what's stopping me from being ill because as soon as we left Australia, I felt fine. But I thought that was because I was taking these anti-malarials. Then uh, when we ended up in England in um, on that trip, um, within a few months, I was back to normal. I was like, I'm fine. But after six months, we decided we were going to move back to Australia. And the one thing I was worried about moving back to Australia was – what if the gut issues come back? And I was really worried about whether that was going to happen. Um, and it was really interesting because as soon as we landed back in Australia on that first day, and bear in mind, I wasn't really thinking about the gut issues at the time. I was kind of excited about being back. As soon as we started drinking and eating, the gut issues came back instantly. And I was like, wow, this is really weird. And I kind of started thinking, is there something in this? Why am I getting ill? Just in Australia. So what did you have? You like bloating and what's Yeah, of serious gut pain again. Bloat came back on instantly. As soon as that before I started eating and drinking, fine. But as soon as I started eating and drinking, came back. And so I started to look into it a bit more and I was like, mm, this is kind of a bit weird. And I put it out on our Instagram page and I was like, anyone else experiencing this? And I got so many emails um, and DMs from people saying, got the same thing, got the same thing. So a few minutes later, when Steve got his job, which was an American company you're working for, they were flying him out to Nebraska in the Midwest America to train for five weeks. So I was like, I'm coming with you, obviously, not missing up on a on, a, uh, on an opportunity to travel, <laughs> especially to the Midwest, which is kind of random, but really exciting. Out in the cornfields. <laughs> and if you've ever been to Midwest America, uh, the food they serve out there is proper fried food, like... And sauces. We're talking like serious, like, yeah, levels of kind of all sorts of preservatives and stuff and all that sort of thing. So, you know, we're expecting already like some serious. I didn't know how I was going to cope with that because in Australia we'd eat so well. Yeah. And uh, I'm very conscious of eating well as well. So, but the interesting thing is within a day or two of being in America, both of us were like, wow, I feel really good. We felt really like very um, a lot more lighter and we felt like we felt kind of normal again. And we we're like, wow, this is really weird. Yeah. But bear in mind, when we did the out, out there, you know, I would wake up with heart palpitations thinking I was going to die because of the food we'd eaten. So we kind of stripped it back and we would cook our own meals when we were. <laughs> heart palpitations. Yeah, I did. Um but the point is, is I, I started to notice a difference within my body. And I was looking at photos of me in clothes from when I was in Australia, like two weeks before to then being in America. And I looked like a different person. I was like, wow, this is so crazy. Then we came back. So you what, you were like different, like you weren't swelling, like you didn't have that feeling of like just being super full and like swollen like is that kind of how it was yeah didn't feel exhausted anymore after food nothing like that just felt back to normal um then we came back to australia i think for about a week or two and i'd booked a flight to go back to the uk so i was going back there for three weeks 
um, to visit some friends. And when I went back, it was so fascinating because, you know, I was putting up my tops going, wow, look at how much gap there is in my tops to what there would be usually. And I realized there and then I was like, because usually... I'm, I'm sure a lot of Brits would understand this. Whenever you go back to the UK after living in Australia, especially women, you're going to probably stock up on a lot of clothes because the uh, fashion in England is way <laughs> better quality than what you get in Australia. So well, you've got like, you know, all these amazing shops to go to oh there. Oh my God, so many. Like, uh, and there's the shops. Oh yeah. Um, so I would always go back to England, stock up, buy lots and lots of clothes. And that time when I went back, I was like, I'm actually going to buy sizes that are too big for me right now because they'll probably be okay for when I get back to Australia, which I was completely right. So they were hanging off me in England. As soon as I got back to Australia, they would then fit me. Swelling and back up again. And, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, so uh, when I when I went back to Australia after that, then I was like, hmm, this is really weird. What is going on mm-hmm. here? And within about a month, as per usual, all back again. All the all the bloating, swelling, gut pain, everything. And I was convinced I was like, something going on here. Mm. So fast forward about maybe a year, it all started to get pretty bad again. And bear in mind, we're going through the pandemic as well. So um, I'd start a Facebook group page by that point to, for anyone else who's going through gut issues um, uh, from our site. And someone on there recommended a... A doctor who had apparently had cured lots of people so I was like sign me up I need to go and see a new doctor who's gonna really help me get over all these awful gut issues I've been going through so we saw we both went in didn't we and we saw him for about a year and we took all his pills his supplements for about a year and they were really expensive so the, the so the problem with that situation is that he didn't really go much into the diet and he was basically like just stay off sugar and processed foods and that was about it and I was like I need someone to really tell me what I need to do here to keep this up. Because if you're not telling me, then I'll probably end up sticking to that during the week and then binging on the weekends. Because I'll be like, well, whatever, I've been really good. No one's really telling me what to do here. And then I saw, I asked him and he sent me to a a nutritionist. And I, oh my God, I remember spending about $150 or $180 on a session with her to tell me to eat chia seed puddings. Uh, <laughs> if you have been through gut issues. You know what? Chia seed pudding, you know, it has a ring to it. You never know. If you've Could been, be the secret. If you've been through <laughs> gut issues and you've been to countless doctors, mm. you will understand the frustration in that. With the ridiculous amount of money, you probably already spent like I have trying to fix this for someone to lend us to tell you to eat chia seed puddings. So I sacked that off straight away. And... Before we knew it, we decided to move down to Sunshine Coast because at that time during the pandemic, we were living in a remote part of Australia called Agnes Water in 1770. And I felt like I needed to get uh, be around more facilities to be able to sort this gut issue out. So when we moved down to Sunshine Coast, I found a gut coach and I hadn't ever been to a gut coach before and the difference between a gut coach and a naturopath is a coach is gonna give you that support that you need to be able to sort of get through the um, emotional side of the gut problems that you're experiencing and that's really what I needed so I saw someone about it for about nine months and they taught me an awful lot about um the emotional side of gut health and how to look after your body not only through what you're eating but through fitness and um meditation as well i think that's a really important point you bring up there though is the the mental health side of things i think it's really kind of not discussed openly but i I think like the way your gut really affects your mood and your concentration and your focus for me personally, that's been a huge struggle is it's really sort of finding a way to overcome that mental fog that you'd have like when you are in the middle of a like a really bad gut phase, like your gut's not doing well, you're really swollen, it's super hard to focus and you just really feel super tired and really sort of just lethargic and, the, you know, you're in a bit of a fog, a mental fog. And 
it makes concentration and everything really difficult and super challenging. So I think, yeah, I completely understand how how you feel about that, and I've I've suffered from that, uh, you know, sort of pretty pretty uh, severely at times. Yeah, it's absolutely debilitating. I remember, do you remember once when we were in Bundaberg, we were like, you you were like, I'm getting a sausage roll, and I was like, oh no, that's we shouldn't really be eating that food, oh, yes. and you had it, and you were like, oh, it's amazing, and I was like, okay, I'll get one too, and within about. 20 minutes 30 minutes we were both exhausted yeah, we were like it's really need to lie down I need to, I need to literally go to sleep for about three hours to get over this let me just put this out there that an australian bakery there's something that i have i, I don't know that's ingrained in me as an aussie or what it is <laughs> but I, I hope that a country bakery has something special when i drive past i'm like okay, is this going to be the country bakery that I've had in my dreams? Is it going to have the sausage roll from heaven? Like, you know, there's this something in me that just needs to go and try that to find out if that is the bakery that I've been searching for in my life. <laughs> so, you know, th- that's kind of how I feel about maybe, the country maybe bakery your, situation. Maybe your story about getting it at India actually stems from your country bakeries. <laughs> Maybe so. I mean, maybe that was the start. <laughs> Who knows? But um, <laughs> anyway, so we were we were both really miserable with our gut issues. Also, and it, if you've suffered from them as well, you will probably relate to this that it literally takes over your entire life. And that's all I would pretty much talk about for the last God knows how many years are my gut issues, which for Steve isn't very fun, even though he's going for them too. Yeah, and it's hard, it's hard on your other half as well because, you know, they're dealing – they're dealing with your kind of, you know, uh, extreme emotions and, you know, how they're sort of reacting to things. It's, it is difficult to navigate from from both sides, I think, yeah. It's really, really – it's a real um, tough situation for anyone who's going through that. When I uh, went to the gut coach, I had to completely transform my diet. So, you know, but, I mean, before I was literally eating like peanut butter on rice cakes for breakfast and – you know what else was I like hard eating anything and I was miserable and and quite overweight to be honest and when we saw the gut coach he was like right get yourself a slow cooker from Kmart you need to start eating like slow cooked lamb and I was like whoa I don't really do that much red meat to be honest yeah because you're thinking like well red meat surely that can't be good for the gut like yeah why would I eat that for like if anything it's just going to clog things up and you know but you know when I when I went to the gut coach, I was like, I'm I'm 150% into this. I'm going to do everything it takes to to sort this out. So I was like, right, I'm going to have to at meat like every day for breakfast and then probably have it for lunch as well. And then basically just eat like organic meat that I got from Coles. There's a brand called Cleavers that we usually buy. Um, that's pretty good. Um, and so I'd have that pretty much all the time. And then he basically said to me, like, think of it like this. Meat is your meal. And if you have anything with it, that's kind of like a little bit of an, like an, an extra, like a side, like to have like <laughs> a tiny bit of salad to go with it or something like that. So, and I was like to eat bone, bone broth every day as well and a huge amount of supplements. And what I learned from that experience was I'd been going about it completely wrong with all these naturopaths before in terms of them just giving me some supplements. And what I learned from this experience was that in actual fact, the supplement is goes through stages so you have your first stage where you're like preparing your gut for taking a series of supplements for like so many weeks and then you go to the second stage which is when you um tackle the, the issue kill phase. the kill phase which is when you start taking the antimicrobials and you take that for a, a long period of time and then you go for the third stage which is like the recovery stage and that's kind of how that gut process actually works in terms of being able to tackle it and kill it and get over it and i did that um for nine months and it was only meant to be it was literally meant to be 12 weeks but i was like i'm going to do it for as long as possible so i can really kill it and it didn't work Mm. which was absolutely heartbreaking and it's not to say it's going to work for everyone but it just didn't work for me and during that time that nine months what was really hard was that i was actually 
like stopped doing a lot of things that I would have enjoyed doing, which would have been like, you know, simple things like going out for a drink at night because I, I couldn't drink. There's like no alcohol involved, obviously. Um, we couldn't go out for dinner anymore. We couldn't eat out anywhere. So we had to cook everything. And we used to love eating out. So we couldn't do that anymore. Oh, it was one of the things we used to enjoy, like, you know, go out for a nice meal. Oh, yeah. and you know, that was the kind of thing you did in the weekend. It was kind of like out the window. You can do weekend, it. Yeah. And now I understand that if you do want to cure your gut issues, you literally have to be 100% committed to it. And there's no binging on the weekends. There's no like, oh, I'll just have a couple of beers and a pizza. Like you just, you can't do that. You have to be properly into it. So um, after that experience, the reason why I stopped it is because we went on holiday to Italy, Greece for a couple of weeks. And I was kind of at the, just about towards the end of the protocol. And I was really worried. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to Italy. How on earth am I going to go there and not eat pizza or pasta or have wine? Oh, like that's the thing you want to go there for. You want to eat like lush pizza and, you know, eat all the nice little croissants and everything and like have some nice wine and Absolutely. pasta. And, and I remember things. saying to my gut coach, I was like, but what if I just had like a slice of pizza? Would that be okay? And he was like, well, yeah, I just don't do it all the time. And I was like, okay, it'd be fine. It'd be fine. I hadn't eaten any carbohydrates for like nine months by this point. So I was kind of terrified by it. But <laughs> You're scared of the croissant. Oh, my God. And, and you know what? The first day we get into, we flew into Naples. We went to go to this really famous pizzeria, which we couldn't get into. But we ended up putting one down the road. No one spoke English in there. And all we could see on the menu was pizza. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to have to order pizza. And I was terrified. And I ordered that margarita and it was ginormous. And because I, I remember saying to Steve, I was like, can we share some one? I'll just have like a slice. And no he's way. like, no way, man. We're, no we're way. in Italy. We're in Italy. This is pizza zone. <laughs> I'm right into the zone of the pizza right now. There's no chance. No chance of sharing. No way. So I was like, right, okay. I will order this pizza. I had the pizza. And I felt okay. And you know what happened? The next day we woke up and we both turned to each other and said, wow, I feel normal. I feel yeah. actually really, really, it I feel like amazing. Totally bizarre because I just expected naturally I'd be bloated again. You know, it was kind of an expectation you had anytime you had any sort of carbs or pizza. It was just, that's it. You're, you're going to end up bloated. Yeah, because sort of, it, yeah. in Australia, like when we lived in Agnes Water, which is in Queensland and uh, it's like it's kind of like about five hours north of Noosa and it was super hot there and I remember us going out for beer and uh, for wine and pizza at night and the next day like my ankles would be so swollen I couldn't even walk up the stairs in our house I felt so uncomfortable from doing that and I was like well, what's going on and I knew like the heat would, would have something to do with that as well mm. but in Italy we were like it was the best feeling in the whole world to feel like we had our freedom back, like we could eat anything again. And we were like, oh, my God, this is like the best part of the trip. We I can, can go drink and, wine. We can have, have gelato. Beer, and and we'd have like gelato, gelato every day, a slice of pizza. You know, that just became normal, that we didn't have to worry about what, what we could eat or not anymore. And it was the best feeling in the world. And then we had to come back to Australia and I was bricking it. I was just like, oh my God, I don't, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back and be back in this gut pain again. And I know it's going to come on and I just don't want to mm. deal with it. And I remember getting back and being in the local coals thinking, oh God, what am I, what am I going to buy? I, I have no idea anymore what to do. And so within literally having a first shower, I started to get skin problems back and I was like, wow, this is weird. And so... We decided then, and we were like, "Right, we need to, we need to make a massive change." And what we were doing is, we would go to our local like organic shop, and we would fill up bottles of water to drink. But what we, what we weren't doing is, we weren't using the spring water for everything else. It was only for like drinking water. So if we were making hot drinks, we'd use the tap. Cup of tea, you'd be putting the jug underneath the tap to as get you would the normally, water, yeah. Right? And then even making the slow cooked meat would be using like tap water for it because you think, you know, that's boiling for like 12 hours. Surely that will be fine. And so the water that we we're buying in Sunshine Coast, we found out that they actually could deliver it to us. So we were like, right, we'll set up a subscription with them and get them to de deliver it to us, which we still do now. And once we made that change and we uh, we, we stopped drinking tap water altogether, like imagine as if, if you're in like somewhere like Thailand where 
obviously you're not going to drink the tap water there. It's the same thing here for us in Australia. So yeah. we're like, I'm not touching that tap water. And as soon as we did that, the gut pain disappeared overnight. And mm. it fa- I felt like I kind of like I was back in Italy. But I got to say, like, it wasn't like because we we tried the bottled water, like pre bottled water that we got from like the supermarkets, and it just. It, yeah, that didn't work either, oddly. It was, yeah, there was only, if you just get like rigid ditch proper spring water, I think was the only thing. I think this pre-packaged stuff is, yeah, no, wasn't yeah. Really good either. You have to be really careful if it's got fluoride in that water. So that's something to do with it as well. Yeah. Apparently I've heard. There but, is varying qualities of, of oh, uh, spring knows. water. So definitely but, something to research wherever you may be. So, yeah, so we changed the water. Automatic gut pain disappeared because – before we went to Italy, you know, I was I was go working out like I would get up at five a.m. go and work out for an hour in the gym because I was told to lift weights, so I d- would do that. Go and take the doggy for a walk, go and do yoga down the beach. Like I had a busy day, like active days, and my gut was just huge, and I was just like, "This isn't right. I don't know what's going on." So when we came back and we switched that water, it it instantly stopped flaring up and i was like oh my god i can eat now and not have flare-ups not not get bloated after everything Mm. and that was due to changing the water we also did a couple of other things as well we bought an air fryer from kmart which didn't actually last that long we ended up (laughs) having to get a better one but the point with that is is that we stopped using the oil which is seed oils yeah so oils yeah there's something about the oils that don't go well for us so Yeah. yeah that was a that was a big big changes and i think that's why a lot of americans have problems as well because there's a lot of like canola oil and um all those different oils they use over there and i've seen since we came back from italy actually people doing tiktoks about how they go to italy and they don't get gut issues and yet they go back to america and bam the gut issues are back so definitely something to do with all the seed oils as well and then um we also start a subscription for an organic veggie box as well. So I've always been a bit worried about veggies um, since I started with the gut coach because apparently there's a lot of vegetables that can really disrupt the gut. So I was I'm kind of being a bit like, oh, I don't really want to go down that road. But I was like, I need to embrace it and start maybe trying a bit more fruit again. Um, and I've actually been okay on it. I think if I do, if I eat too much of it, like, in consecutive days, it's not going to fare well. But if I have like an acai bowl, like maybe once a week or once every couple of weeks, I'm okay on that now. If I try to do that before, but yeah, I would have been pretty bloated from that. So it's kind of interesting what's happened. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting um, how we're now feeling after that. Am I taking any more supplements now? I'm taking a couple. Do I know if they're doing anything? I, I don't really know. But I think probably one thing, if what I've learned is don't just try and fix it yourself by doing research and taking your own supplements. You really need to speak to yeah. someone. Go and see a gut specialist. Go and go and see some doctors and get a, you know, even be it a naturopath or, or someone who has experience with it because it's not something you sort of want to really – you know, just sort of gamble with. I think you, yeah. I think you need to to go and see some a specialist of some sort. So, I mean, for me, um, I had a lot of candida, so um, I found sort of supplements around that really helped. And I think you know, depending on what sort of organisms are growing in your in your gut, and it can differ for everybody. But um, which is why you really need to get a, a sort of a, an idea of what you're dealing with, and then you can really kind of work with that. So, I think it's yeah, really really important to to get some some good advice from from your doctor or, or your naturopath. Yeah, and you know what's really interesting is a lot of people always say to me, they're like, yeah, but if you if you think it's only something to do with Australia, then why has Steve got gut issues as well? And there's so many Australians out there who do suffer from gut issues, especially like gluten issues as well. Like there are lots and lots of Australians who can't eat gluten in Australia, but they can only do it, they can eat as much as they want in Europe, for example. Um, and that is something to do with the way that it's processed over here. Um, the same with vegetables as well. You yeah, know, the, whatever the vegetables, whatever they're spraying on the veggies, be sprayed with while they're being, you know, cultivated. So yeah, I mean, there, there could be a thousand different things along the way that we would have no idea about. So I think that's why you just try to minimise that as as much as possible to try and eat really well. I guess. Yeah. So this is where we're at right now with our gut issues. Um, definitely not cured, but. I'm so glad that we've finally figured out the water issue for us. That's really helped us sort of 
be able to manage the gut issues a bit better. Whether that might work for you, I don't know, but, um, you know, it's worth a try at least. Yeah, worth a shot. Um, but yeah, if you are suffering from gut issues as well, be rest assured that you are not alone and there are thousands of us out there who are going through the exact same thing, who find it very debilitating and, um, you know, you get to a point where you feel like almost your identity has been stripped from you, which I know I have. Um, you know, I had this huge love of fashion and now I can't even wear like, like I have to wear like baggy clothes most of the time and which is kind of heartbreaking. Yeah, but I, I mean, I, I had a similar thing where I just, you know, I, I used to enjoy feeling fit and healthy and really energetic. And I think that's uh, having the sort of gut issues has really robbed me of that sort of energy I used to have. So, um, yeah, it, it is it is a difficult thing to work through. But, you know, definitely, you know, you aren't alone. There's there's definitely a lot yeah. of people out there with the same issue. Um, so if you are suffering from gut issues, then, you know, come and join our Facebook group, which is London and Sydney Gut Health Support, because it's super, super important to find other people who are going through it as well. So you can all support each other and, um, and try and get through it as well. So... That's our gut story on the episode today. So if you are suffering from gut issues, come and join our Facebook page, which is London and Sydney Gut Health Support. Drop us some comments about what's worked for you and hopefully you might help other people who are in the same boat as well. Um, we will continue to update you on our gut uh, journey and hopefully one day we will be cured and, uh, and we'll be living back eating anything and everything watch out for that gelato anyway look best of luck on your journey um i dream of pizza and gelato and uh i think you know eventually one day i'll get there and uh, and be happily eating those without any trouble but uh until then take care and uh we'll see you soon bye bye see ya <laughs>